Hello again, it's Rick here from The Game Creators and uh, here's another video tutorial and this time we're looking at uh, types again. Uh, someone mentioned that uh, in the last example I only used uh, integers so I'm going to use strings, integers and floats inside types and the idea I had was to make a little simple database okay so not really a game this time just something that can take some data and you can step through different records of a simple database. So let's have a look at this program and, and walk through the, the code. Uh, as usual, the sort of setup stuff that you normally have, creating the window, giving it a name, and um, then we come to some variables here. We've got a constant max records. So this database can only have up to 100 records. Obviously you could change that number, but that's just how I've set it up. Uh, the current record at the very start is going to be record number one. Total records uh, at the very start would be one because when you first run the software, there'll be blank fields ready to enter in the first record. Here we come to the type, okay? So we're creating a type container and within this we've got first name as string, last name as string, age as integer and score as float. I mean, this is just a simple database. It's just taking the first name, last name, an age and some kind of spurious score. Obviously, you can make your own database and have your own data in that. But that's all within a type called record. Okay. The next part is to create an array called database as record type max records 100. Okay, remember max records? There, 100. So it's going to create an array called database with 100 records with that format. Each one will have two strings, an integer, and a float number. Okay, then we um, go to these routines here. Go sub, okay, I don't think I've actually explained what go sub does. It goes to a subroutine and then when it hits a return it comes back. So it's a nice way to modulize your code. So first it goes to go sub clear all records and if we go down the bottom here, clear all records. What this does is it goes through all the records for i equals 1 to max records be 100. Uh, then it sets database i first name zzz. Now I, I was forced to, to put that in. It, originally it was just like that. I mean it could just be z actually. Uh, but I'm using an internal sort and because it was like that it put all the non uh, records at the start. So this will just force all the records that we're not interested in to the back. Uh, last name uh, empty string, age zero, and score zero. It does that 100 times and then returns back. Okay, so back to the top. Where are we? Here we are. Then we go to create text, pop down, and we go through a routine that creates my simple database title and it aligns that set text alignment one, comma one. So it's going to set text number one to center the screen or center of the um, the X. It's a nice command to use. Then we create text, first name, last name, age and score and then we have a little loop for I equals 1 to 5 and we set all of those to 48 size and then we come back. So that's created the text. Then we've got to position the text on the screen. So that routine, it's just underneath the create text routine. It sets the text position and this one here, the first one, it gets the device width and divides that by two. And because we've already set the alignment to one, it'll be centered on the screen. The other ones are specifically positioned on the X of 20 and then Y 150, 250, 350, 450 and return. Okay. and. Then we do create buttons. Now, what I'll do is just run this so you can see the text. And uh, So there's my simple text centered. First name, last name, age, score. Ignore all this for now and ignore that. That's, that's printed somewhere else. So now we go to create buttons. And these are virtual buttons. Okay. Quick way for you to put something on the screen and let the user interact and give you uh, choices. So we're going to add a virtual button, number one, 
uh, x and y and size 120 and we're going to give it some text add and we do the same for button 2, 3, 4 and 5 so we've got add, delete, sort, previous and next so that's what create buttons does back to the loop and then we've got create edit boxes so edit boxes are uh, fields, if you like, that you can fill in, the user can fill in. So I make four of these edit boxes. Create edit box number one. I set the position of one at 250 by 150. I set the size of it. We set edit box size one, X of 400 and Y of 50. We set the edit box text size within it to 48 so it fits within the edit box. And we say we don't want more than 15 characters for the first name which is what edit box one will allow you to type in. Do similar for edit box two, three and four and then return back. So that, if we run it again, okay, that sets up our screen. So we've got my simple database, first name, last name, age score. Then we've got these buttons, these virtual buttons, and then we've got these uh, edit boxes. Okay, so that's the setup. And then we come to here, database current record dot first name equals quote quote. Now, if that wasn't set, if we take that off, look what happens. The first one's Z because we filled every record with Zs. So we force the first one to have nothing in it. Current record is, would be number one. If we go back up here, current record number one. Okay. Then we go sub to fill data. So what does fill data do? Let's have a look. Down here at the bottom. What fill data does is it copies the data from the type array into the edit boxes. Now when you first run it, there's not going to be anything in there. But uh, when you're moving in between different records, then this routine is going to fill things up as you, as you move between different records. So we just call that at the start. Then we come to our main loop. What we're doing here now is we're checking to see if a virtual button has been pressed. Number one is the add new record button. And if it's been pressed, we save the data of the current record because, you know, we could be anywhere within the database. Then this check here is to make sure that we're not at the very end of the records. Okay, so we've got 100 records. We don't want to add any more because we, we can't add any more. Uh, we we can assume we're not at the end, so we increase to total records. Total records tells us how many records we're actually added so far. The current record then becomes total records. So imagine you started with one, you added one, so you've got two total records, and you make the current record number two. Then again, similar to above, where we filled in the first name, we do that for the new record, and then we go sub fill data. So that's what add new record does. So let's just run that. Let me type in my name. Oh, spell it right. Then click. So we're viewing one record of one. We do add. Now we're viewing record two of two. So let's say we have record two as Andy. We go previous, next. So that's what that check did on the virtual button. The next check is delete. We'll come back to that. That's quite a complex routine. Uh, we've got a sort in there. We'll come back to that. Then we've got previous and next records. So we check virtual button pressed four. That's the previous button. We go sub save data. So what does save data do? Well, if you've typed in some data in a current record, you want to save it into the array. So the database, current record, first name, it will equal the the text within edit box one and the same for last name edit box two and for age and score we take the val of what's in edit box three and four the val convert a string so let's say the string was 22 so it will take that string because it's just some characters and it will convert it into a number and then you can store it into, as an integer into that. You can't just take a string and just shove it in there. You've got to convert it properly. Same happens for the floating point value. OK. So 
So that saves the data. Because we're going previous, we're going to decrease from the current record. So let's say we're at record number five, for instance. Current record now becomes number four because we're in previous. We just do a check to make sure that we're not less than one. If we've gone, because if we were on record one, we went to record zero. Well, there is no record zero, so we're just not going to make sure we don't go out of bounds. And if we have gone below one, then we force it back to one, and there is no previous. I mean, you could actually make it loop round to the uh, total records. So you could say, say you've got 10 records, you got to the first one, you went previous again, you'd go to record 10. End if, and then fill data. Because you've saved the data, say you're on record 5, you've gone down to record 4, but then you need to fill the data onto the screen, otherwise you're still looking at record number 5. And we saw what fill data did before this routine, it sets the edit boxes of the current record. And that's previous. Similar for next record. Okay, we just check that particular virtual button. We go to save data. We make sure that we're not at the end. If current record doesn't equal total records, then we're not at the end. So we can increase the current record. If the current record is greater than match records, then the current record must equal match records. Again, more checks to make sure we don't go out of bounds. And then we go and fill the data. So that gives us the navigation of going in between the different records. Go back to delete the current record. OK, this is quite complicated, but it's, it's actually simple. Uh, but it's easy to make mistakes when you're coding something like this. So uh, we check to see if we press the delete button. We need to move all the records ahead of this one down one. Okay, so let's imagine you've got 20 records. You're at record 10. You press delete to delete record 10. What you want to do is you want to shift all the records from 11 to 20 down one place. So 11 becomes 10, 12 becomes 11, and so on. And then you end up with, say, 19 records. So first you do a check. If current record is less than the total records, then we're okay. We can shift down. We're not actually at the end because if you were at the end at 20 there's nothing to shift down and that's dealt with on this part of the code so then we do a for next loop we go from the current record to the total records so again let's imagine we're at record 10 to 20 and what we do is we say this current record 10 now equals the data that's in record 10 plus 1 so the data that's in 11 and we do that for all the four fields then we do next i, and now obviously the next time it'll be uh, database 11 equals 12, and so on. And it does that until all that data is shifted down one. Then we decrease the number of records, and we're done. Now, if you were at the very end, okay, and making sure that you're not the only record, so if we're not record one by ourselves, then we can just clear all the data in the current record and de decrease the, the current record and decrease the total number of records. So a bit complicated, but if you were coding it yourself, you'd probably work all that out once you realise all the possible ramifications. That's why you've got to do bug testing and check that your, your logic is sound. Then we've got this uh, internal sort routine. Uh, App Game Kit has a sort that you can just call. Uh, it's not very powerful, and in my next tutorial I'm going to write a whole sort routine because that's quite useful to know about, and uh, this one doesn't really do all the things you'd want it to do. But essentially, we just do database.sort, and it will sort the data. So let's just run the application. OK, I'm going to fill it out with some information. So this is me. OK. I'm 49. Yes, I'm that old. Uh, I got a score of 5.5, let's say. Then we do add. OK. Just add in a different name. Make this person older than me. That's good. And he got a worse score than me. Add another one. Bob. He can be younger than me. And because he's younger, he's quicker, he got a better score. Okay, so we can go through the three different fields. We've typed in. I'm going to add one more 
Uh, okay. So let's go to Bob. Bob is uh, we're viewing record three or four. We're going to delete Bob. All right. So delete Bob. We're now viewing three or three. Joe has been shifted into three, and obviously the ones before. Andy and Rick are still there. If we click sort, then now the records are sorted in alphabetical order, like so. And that's the simple database. That's showing types, recording strings, and integer values, and, uh, ah, actually I just realized, uh, I am making a mistake because it's not recording the decimal points. So I'm gonna fix that and we're going to see what the problem is. So let's get out of here. Okay, I've worked out what the issue is. Uh, down in the routine here, where I'm converting the float with val, it should be val float and not just val, because val is for integer, val float is for floating point. So if we run once more, type my name in, set this to say 3.14, Add to Joe, he can be 5.25, previous, there we go, it's recording that data. So that's the simple database, I'm going to do, write a sort routine for the next tutorial and that should be of interest, maybe I'll add a nice background to this and make it a bit more interesting, but generally it was about giving you uh, a better idea on how to use types and how you can mix and match data within a type and then reference it. So please subscribe, please like and uh, comment as you wish. See you next time.